Thanks so much for the candy. You know, as a return of a gesture, since you're a new species to our planet, I want to offer you something you've never seen before. Technology so advanced, even your alien race would be amazed. That's right, this is the coldest water bottle. It can actually keep your green blood cold. For 36 to 100 hours, comes in all different shapes, colors, and sizes. Now, if you want to buy one, there's actually a link in the description below, and if you use the code EXTREME, you will actually get 10% off. Or if you just want to try and win one, there's a link for that as well. I got news for you, I use this everywhere. I have a basketball game to go to later. Instead of filling it up with water, we might have some White Claw. Don't be judging. You know Predator would drink White Claw too. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is the Extreme Channel. My name is Mr. X. Today we are looking at an Extreme Collectible. That's right, it's a thousand dollar Predator statue, but this is the City Hunter Predator, or the Predator from the movie Predator 2, where apparently this super advanced, superior alien race couldn't beat a second-rate police officer in the most dangerous city in the U.S. But anyway, this is made by Prime One Studios. Prime One Studios in the last few years has come out with a number of Predator statues. Both movie-related Predator statues and also comic-related Predator statues. And I've actually ordered most of them. So you're going to see all of them on the table. But actually, in a few days, make sure you've actually not only liked this video, but you've subscribed to the channel and hit that bell notification because I'm going to do a huge countdown with about 20 different Predator and Alien pieces. But for today, we're going to look at this piece right here. This is one-fourth scale, meaning it's been shrunk down four times to what a real-life version would be. And to be honest, I would love a real-life version of a Predator statue. Mrs. X, probably not so much. But I was really on the fence on this guy. I ordered him right away, and then due to delays, I ended up canceling him. And then about a month and a half or so ago, I saw in-hand pictures on social media forums. And I was like, you know what? I'm having some regrets, especially for the very affordable price that this is in relation to other statues. Like I said, $1,000 is still quite a bit of money. But we're going to talk more about that in the value section. The first thing we're going to kick off on this guy is actually we're going to talk about the concept. And that's what I really love about this statue because I've owned a few other city predator statues in the past. First right here is the Sideshow Maquette. Now this one I was never a huge fan of. I think it was the best for its time, for what was available at the time. But I ended up doing a trade for him. I actually traded for this American Werewolf in London statue. And recently, if you caught it, I reviewed this life-size bust, which I still own, of the City Hunter Predator. And Prime One Studios, who made this, recently teased a one-third scale museum pose version of this. So it's highly likely that I will actually get that one as well. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the upcoming video. Starting on this guy, what I love is they actually took a scene from the movie. Now, they've done their own twist on a few different aspects of it, but he is sitting on this building. So there's this outright eagle that he's kind of uh, prowling the city. He's about to attack Danny Glover or he's about to attack some of the gang members. I can't remember the exact scene. But they've taken their own modern interpretation on this. And some of that is with the switch out options you can do. So you have this bronze petunia, petunia, not petunia, patined, whatever the fuck they call it, eagle. And he is crouching on top like a hunter would be, like someone stalking his prey. And as I said, you have a few different switch out options. Right now, I'm actually showing the exclusive, but in the picture you can see the regular version, and we'll talk all about that. And he just looks ready to maim. He looks ready to predatize, is that a word? To become a predator, I guess he is a predator. It's really early in the morning right now. He is ready to kill someone, and I, I just love it. I love the concept of this. I think it's fantastic. It's not boring like that old Sideshow one was. It takes it kind of to a different level that we haven't seen with a predator statue. and. Really, while the concept is very cool, I don't think it's like five out of five, but I do give it a four out of five. It's different, it's unique, but what really landed the statue for me was some of the design options we're gonna talk about. And it's not just with some of the switch outs I mentioned, which we'll look closer at. But before we get into that, here's the unboxing and assembly. It was one box, it was a little heavier than I thought it would be, 
and your standard white foam. It did have an art box, but I didn't want to take it out of the box, which is too bad because it was probably amazing. Everything was on one layer. You're probably still regretting you didn't see that art box. Alright, so let's get the dimensions for him really quick. The widest point of the base is only about 11 inches. His hand sticks out maybe 2 inches more. The deepest part is 13. And then the tallest part is 21 inches. Unless you have one of his switch outs. So let's look at those. On his right hand, he can be holding his disc right here. Now this is the exclusive, so it's only available on some of the statues. And his blades are actually out. Or you can replace it with him holding his staff. And I quite like both options. This is the, the staff is the regular version. Now if you have his staff out, he has two options to actually hold his disc. Here's kind of a placeholder for it, or a pouch, or whatever you want to call it that he secures it in. Here, here's what it looks like when it's empty. And then here's what it looks like when you actually put a disc in it. Then he has two portraits. The regular version just comes with the mask portrait, which I quite like, but I display all my predators without a mask. Here he is without his mask. This is the exclusive version. Now, one big fail on the design is almost every predator statue I have, whether it's Prime One Studios or Sideshow or Custom, they have a separate display, bus display stand for the mask. They don't have it here. So I usually prefer that because I put it down like their mask is kind of displayed below, even though it still has dreadlocks, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna see if I can custom do something, but uh, I really wanna display both of them and I really wanna display the unmasked version on the actual statue. Now I probably won't put it way down here because the other really unique feature about this statue, what really made me buy it, is you can actually mount this to the wall. Yes, you can mount it to the wall. Check out right here. You can see it's reinforced where you would actually put the screws. And this piece right here actually goes on the bottom because this bottom display stand, when you saw me assemble it, obviously it would not be up on the wall. So you essentially insert this via magnet to cover up the big hole down there. Now I'm extremely worried about mounting this to the wall. I'm not gonna lie. So it weighs 27 pounds, about 12 kilograms. And most of the weight, surprisingly, is Predator himself. It's not the base down here. And maybe that's strategically done. But I do plan to mount him. If you want to see what that looks like, check out the Extreme Channel Instagram, Facebook page, and TikTok. The link is in the description below. But I think that's a great feature because as collectors, space, boxes, and spouses are our biggest enemies. So this eliminates that as an option. And the way I'm doing my Predator setup, you can actually see some of the alien stuff right back there. One section is all Dark Horse comic based, and the other section is all movie based. And there is a perfect empty spot on the wall right where I'm putting all the movie based statues. 
One other big fail, and I think it's design related, is the blades right here. Unfortunately, they used a plastic material. They should have used a painted polystone or even a metal would have been 10 times better. So I think that's a huge miss by Prime One Studios and a huge miss without the bus display. But I think everything else is a huge pro. So I'd still get a four out of five on the display because honestly, we'll, we'll jump into it a little bit with, with the value coming up, but this was a pretty affordable piece. However, the paint and sculpt, there are some misses on that as well, which is a little bit disappointing because this is my second Prime One Studio statue and it has a lot of the same misses as some of the previous one, this guy right here that I actually reviewed. Now, as I said, I have a bunch more coming in, so we'll see if they follow that line or not, but let's look at this guy for now. So I wanna start with the masked version. This is really battle damage, and I kind of like that actually. It kind of adds more to the story. They had all this blue battle damage in with the copper tones. I think that looks good. I've never been a fan of this mask, but I think it's done very well. It's very movie accurate. The dreads, we'll look more at that on the one that's on there because it's a little bit easier for me to show on camera for you guys. And really quick, the staff. The staff, I'm not a huge fan. I like the staff itself, but if you get into the paint and uh, sculpt detail, it looks okay. It looks a little bit plasticky, mainly in the middle here. You typically don't notice it, but again, a lot of that dark shading, kind of some battle wear on it. And we'll look closer at his hands on the other pieces. The base I think is done excellent. I like this bronze look and the shading and the eagle. I, I like it a lot actually. I'm surprised how much I like it. And it's not too much of this gold and yellow colors because you do see some of that flowing up to the statue. I think there's a nice break in the continuity. And again, I think it's just gonna look fantastic mounted on the wall. Really quick, his skin is a little bit of a, a mix. So the netting is mixed media. It's very tight. You can't move it at all. Um, I've always been a fan of netting on Predators. I know a lot of people don't like it. I do, as long as it's not too movable. And I think they pulled that off here, so that's nice. But the paint job is okay. It's not bad. There's just a lot left to be desired, and it's interesting how some of the areas of the skin are smooth and some of them have that reptilian look to it. His hands look like they're a miss, especially more on the paint than the sculpt. I like the long fingernails, I like the slender fingers, but it just, it's too messy to me. And you'll see some of that when you move up here, it almost looks, um, it doesn't look professionally painted, let's put it that way. Uh, right there, just the spots. The netting actually helps cover up some of that, so I think it's a miss on a lot of the predator skin, but the anatomy is done very well. So they have this humanoid anatomy and they even included some, some veins in there. Uh, he's not over muscularized, which is nice. And all of his armor kind of follows that, that flow that we saw on the mask. So this is definitely a predator that's been fighting for a while. And it all has that hint of blue, very old stuff. The circuitry here looks decent, I think. There's a, another close look at the um, blades. Like I said, definitely a miss. There's the disc. Some more comments about the hands. A little bit of a miss right there in my opinion. The armor looks great though. You know, that blue color really pops on camera. You don't see it as much on the actual statue. A few other things here, and again, I think it's more the paint. Like he has a trophy right here. Uh, the paint just doesn't look good on it. The armor looks much better than the skin and some of the accessories. There's the gun. But what I like though is all these coppers and gold tones There's and, and even like kind of the yellow uh, beige on the skin. It still mixes up okay. The feet look nice if you're into that th kind of thing. But a few of the same comments on the paint like we talked about on the hands. The dreads look good I think. I think they did a nice job on the dreads. The paint's clean. Uh, they are hard poly stones, so they're not movable. I think it's always smart to make them a little bit uh, pliable for breakage purposes. I've had a lot of Predator uh, dreads break over the years. They did a much better job with the paint on the portrait, which in my opinion is one of the most important parts. It doesn't look as sloppy or as plastic as the rest. His eyes are a little bit of a miss in my opinion, but still look pretty good. The inside of the uh, mouth with the veins and the teeth look nice. Teeth are a little bit left to be wanting, but it still doesn't look bad. Not as good as you typically see on like Prime One quality. And keep in mind, we examine this 
uh, up close and micro detail. When you're looking at this, you're looking at it from back here and it looks fantastic. So very similar to that last Predator statue, if you caught that review, I think the sculpt is done very well. I'm a big fan. I think they nailed the movie accuracy. A uh, few areas I could have seen better, but I think it's a four out of five on the sculpt. Really impressed. I like this guy. It's the paint job, and it seems hard to paint a Predator, honestly. It seems like so many companies have problems with that. Now, it's not a bad paint job. I want to emphasize that. But at best, some of the stuff we talked about, it's three out of five. However... I am totally good with that because this is a very affordable piece. So I keep talking about value. They made two versions of this as I talked about. The exclusive, which is what you see right here, and then the regular version, which has these switch outs you can check out right here. And it was $900 for the regular, $950 for the exclusive. They made $400 of the regular and $350 of the exclusive. So they only made $750 of these at that affordable price point. My most recent video a few days ago, this Cyborg Superman, I was talking about how one four scale pieces nowadays are $1,500 and more. So I think this is a great, fantastic value. It only has really that one other competitor from Sideshow at this time. I think the value is a five out of five on this. I really do. I really like it. It doesn't take up a lot of display space. I think I will easily get my money back, probably be able to make a profit. I don't think anyone's gonna beat this despite some of its flaws. Now the X factor, is this five out of five? I think hanging it on the wall may elevate it to a five out of five. I think when you walk in, you say, damn, that one's on the wall, that's pretty cool, especially when he's above the other Predator statues. But until I do that, I have to settle at a four out of five. I still really like it. I do think it's an exclusive or bust. You have to get this unmasked portrait. Although, this is one of the few statues where I really dig it with the mask and the staff. So I really like the regular version as well. So maybe I'm kind of contradicting myself, but I could definitely see a lot of people liking that one. What do you think? Exclusive or bust? Throw that down in the comments below. The reason I ask you to comment is you could win a statue. We will be giving all of these statues away, plus additional ones, at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. So thanks guys. If you like Alien and Predator stuff or even Marvel stuff, make sure you've subscribed to the channel. Drop me a like on the way out. It really helps me, and I really appreciate it. I will talk to you very, very soon. Take care.